indeed we have success at last in finding what we were looking for. It's been a, a morning of frustrations with lions and leopards giving us the slip, but our jackals have come good. And we've managed to find two of the family of five. I can't see the rest of them, but these two are just lying on the edge. And aren't they amazing? They're such cool looking animals. Dave was just saying to me he likes the way that they look. They are very, very pretty, and we're getting such great visuals of this little jackal as being very relaxed right next to us. And isn't that amazing? You can see what I was talking about earlier with those grays and browns and whites, how that breaks up their outline. And when they're lying down, they're actually quite difficult to spot. Funny enough, Dave spotted them. I didn't even see them. They were right next to the road, but I missed them completely. I was busy looking off to the right-hand side and didn't notice them. But luckily enough for us, they've decided to rest here, which is great. Mercedes, you're wondering what the difference is between a jackal and a hyena? Well, there are quite a number of differences. A hyena, if you go back in time, they say are more closely related to cats than anything else, even though a hyena is in its own family, hyena day. The jackals are more part of the canine family, so they are closely related to dogs. And if you see a jackal when it stands up, it will have a very straight back. It has this much longer muzzle that is very almost wolf-like with these big pointy ears, whereas Ahina will have that sloped back, rounded ears, and is a lot bulkier in the face, the muzzle tends to be a lot shorter. Um, so that's the main kind of differences between the two of them. Also the jackal is much, much smaller, and doesn't live in massive family groups. So yes, I said that there are five of them here, and that's because we've got the female with her three offspring, whereas um, you'll find with hyenas, they are quite social. They'll build in, into clans, and sometimes you'll get clans that are 50, 60 strong. So they tend to be a lot more social than what the jackals are. The jackals tend to have a pair, and they'll have their young, and then once the young reach maturity, they then distribute, and the jackals stay in the same place, the pair that their mother and father. So that's the main differences between them. They have a different sort of social structure, different physically, size-wise, they're different. Um, you'll also find that even though both scavenge, these side striped jackals that you see here are actually mostly hunting. So they will scavenge from time to time, but it's quite seldom. Most of the time a side striped jackal is actually hunting for itself, whereas the black back jackal, which we also see in this area, tends to be a little bit more of a scavenger than this guy. It's very difficult to tell who's male and female here though, because they look so similar. So, Megan, you're wondering if the jackals are related to the wild dogs, the African wild dogs? Well, they are both canines, so yes, they are in some distant relative, but they're not very close at all. The jackals have separated slightly and become more kind of fox and wolf-like, whereas the dogs are more on their own little sort of arm of the canine family. But yes, they are very much related they're both like i say part of that sort of dog grouping but isn't this special look how it's just relaxed now jackals generally for us is very very fleeting glimpses they tend to be they tend to be kind of across the road and running away so to have one just sitting and admiring the view and allowing us to spend time with it is so so special and i believe a lot of you are very happy to see the jackals and agreed, they are a special animal and one that we don't get to spend that much time with. But this airstrip, it seems like this pair, because of planes probably coming in and landing and lots of vehicle traffic that picks up their guests during the day, I think they've become quite used to cars and that's why they're happy just to sit and let us have a look at them, which is great. But isn't that pretty? Look at those kind of beady little eyes that are analyzing us and those big round pointy ears. Very, very cool. I'm surprised they're so awake because generally they're more nocturnal than they are diurnal. So, these are you wondering if jackals bark? They don't bark. They make a more of a howling sound. So they, much like wolves, in that they they howl and they make this very sort of high pitched sound. Now, side striped jackals and black back jackals both have um, a howling sound, but it's a little bit different. I'm really not sure how to actually attempt to make the sound of a side striped jackal because it's quite difficult so what i'm going to try to do is see if i can't find the sound somewhere before i even attempt it because my mind 
is telling me that I can't do it, which is, I'm sure I can if I just hear it again. But they have a very different sound to the Black Black Jackal, but it's more a howl than anything else. But like I say, I'll try and find it on my phone. Um, I don't have the app with me at the moment, so I'm going to have to try and search for it just now. Um, and we'll try and play it for you so you can hear what it sounds like. And you'll find that they don't make too much noise other than if there's a disturbance. So the side strike jackal, often if there's a predator that's moved through, then you'll hear them howling um, unless they're looking for a mate. Once they've paired together like this, it's very seldom that they're going to make a lot of noise. And they don't really want to attract too much attention to themselves. It's only if there's an intruder, maybe another male or another pair that's coming into their area. Or like I say, if there's a predator, then they start to make that noise. But the blackback jackal is one of those sounds that is synonymous with the African bush. For some reason, as a kid, when you grow up, you learn... Hmm. So sorry, I stopped what I was saying there because this is quite an in-depth question. So James wants to know if a blackback and a side striped were competing at the same carcass, who would dominate... Well, the side striped is a slightly bigger jackal than the black backed. So I've seen side stripes chasing black backs before. And where we are now used to be all black backed jackal territory. We used to see a lot of black backed jackals in these areas. We used to see them a lot on Inkoro, on Chitwa, Airstrip, all over this area. And over time, the side stripes seem to have moved in and pushed those black backs out. So the side striped is slightly bigger. Um, so I would imagine at a carcass, you might find that the side striped would dominate. But the funny thing is that a blackback jackal is quite a cunning, devious character, and they are don't sort of take no for an answer. So I've seen blackback jackals feeding around lions, so size is not the be-all and end-all. It's just having a bit of attitude. So it would be interesting. I would, uh, would actually love to see that interaction. I don't think I've seen any recorded sort of sightings of it or even read anything about side-striped jackals and blackback jackals feeding in the same carcass. And it's probably because the side-striped jackals don't scavenge very much at all. So you find that they leave that for the blackbacks and they just don't like the competition of other cats um, and hyenas and vultures. They'd rather go and hunt for themselves. But it would be very interesting to see that interaction between the two. I would imagine the side-striped jackal would dominate just because of the size situation. They tend to be a little bit bigger than the blackbacks. But I'm really, really happy to see them so relaxed. So Victor, who's watching all the way from Canada, you're wondering if this jackal can be domesticated um, like normal dogs. Well, I would imagine it could be. I don't think there would be any way that you wouldn't be able to domesticate them. They are very intelligent animals, and you would probably be able to find a way to domesticate them. I just don't know of anybody that has. And fortunately with jackals, most people out in South Africa and in other parts of Africa actually see them as vermin. And the reason why is because they really are bad for farmers. You'll find some farmers will have sheep or goats or cattle and jackals are really, really bad um, at taking the young ones. So a lot of the farmers out here and a lot of people really despise jackals and see them in a very bad light. And so they're often destroyed and not actually ever taken in and tried to be domesticated in any way but I imagine if you spend time with them you would be able to um, get them fairly relaxed and I'm sure somebody out there has had a habituated jackal at some point in time but really the best place for them is out in the wild where they belong so domesticating of wild animals is never the best idea and it's never really the right thing to be doing so hopefully not too many people have done it and that they leave the jackals to be wild and allow them to thrive in the wild areas and not take them in and domesticate them. It's a huge problem that has happened with cheetahs, that large populations and, and, and sections of habitat were lost for cheetah because people took them and tried to habituate them and, and make them pets. And so that caused the number to start going downwards. Um, at one stage, there was a guy in, in Asia that had just as many cheetah as we have in the world today as a private collection. So it just shows you when people do start to domesticate animals, it's not for the interest of the animal in terms of its survival as a wild species.